Chapter 28 of Tanya Ignoring sinful thoughts while engaged in divine service. If plagued by foreign thoughts while engaged in divine service, ignore them. It is precisely because the godly soul is now active that the animal soul resists. How many times people come to me saying, I just can't pray. It's so shameful that I'm thinking about all these other things while praying. I'm just not religious enough. I'm just not holy enough. And I'm like, no. Read this chapter of Tanya and you'll understand why that is the farthest from the truth. Let's see, right here. Because in the other chapter we were talking about when sinful thoughts come when engaged in the mundane. Now the thoughts are coming during prayer service or while learning Torah or what have you. So it says here that extraneous thoughts that come during prayer indicates that one's devotion was of sufficient quality to give the animal soul cause for concern. And this realization itself should gladden one and encourage him to continue his efforts. This is so different. <laughs> Instead of feeling debased and lowly and sad that you have these thoughts, you actually can rejoice. It's kind of like a compliment that you are about to engage in something holy and the animal soul is like, oh boy, no, I don't want her to succeed. I'm going to like sabotage her and I'm going to give her extra, you know, <laughs> an extra challenge to dissuade her from wanting to continue. So by realizing this, you'll not give up in your prayers and continue the battle. It's a common error when a foreign thought occurs to some people during prayer that they mistakenly conclude that their prayer is worthless. It's just that the animal soul is so concerned that the godly soul is having the upper hand. So what we have to do is strengthen ourselves with all of our resources that, it, that we should be able to prevail. And someone would think maybe that if they prayed properly and correctly that no foreign thought would arise in their mind. But that's like a mistaken belief. They would be correct if there would be one soul within a person, the same soul that prays being also the one that thinks and ponders on the foreign thoughts. But that's not the case. We have an animal soul and a godly soul. There are two souls and they're waging war against each other in our mind. The mind is thus not only the battleground, but also the prize, the object of the battle between the two souls. For each of them wishes and desires to rule and pervade the mind exclusively. So the thoughts these foreign thoughts that occur to us in prayer is no indication of a fault in the person. Hallelujah for this truth. Wow, how many people just have such a hard time when they pray and they feel so lowly. But the fact is that the godly soul is clothed within the animal soul. That's why the godly soul cannot ignore these foreign thoughts rising from the animal soul. And thus the foreign thoughts disturb one's devotion and prayer. So we can't respond to this. We cannot give in to this willy trickery of the animal soul. It's as if, let's say, a heathen, a wicked heathen, chats and speaks with one to confuse them. It's not that they want to chat with you. It just they have this goal of, you know, distracting you from what you're engaged in. So we have to realize that and and not respond to these negative thoughts. Because if we do, then what happens is we would be 
answering not a fool according to his folly because then you can become like him so if you engage in this like battle with your animal soul and say oh leave me alone why are you bother me oh i'm not worthy i'm not good enough then what happens is you're engaging the animal soul he got you <laughs> he won and then you'll be distracted so you just have to like push it with two hands as if you're deaf and that you're not paying attention to it so that you won't get dirtied and distracted as it were from the holy goal that you're trying to achieve by your prayers. So so we have to pretend not to know or hear from this foreign thoughts that occurred to him and really strengthen ourselves and uh, like really you know focus with more power of concentration and then we have to just humble ourselves before Hashem like if this isn't working if we continuously see that we're being challenged with these thoughts in our holy endeavors because it says here that just like a father takes pity on his children um, God will be compassionate on his soul because we come from God. We are his child. And um, we beg him to rescue us from the turbulent waters. And we beg Hashem that these thoughts won't disturb us. And then the Altar Rebbe 